there is no medical disease. There is only stress-induced mineral dysregulation that causes metabolic dysfunction. Now, Tamara, when I made that statement, I fully expected to have this tsunami of practitioners saying, you don't know what you're talking about. How dare you insult us with our intellect, blah, 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 blah. Nothing. Not one comment to challenge or refute my assertion. Wow. Not one. And so you think that didn't embolden me to, to dig deeper and to prove that, in fact, that is the truth? And it's, this is not about ego. I just want the truth to come forward. Um, but I have to say, your um, book, so I have it here. Um, it's mm -hmm. got a lot of shine uh, because it's reflecting the Kindle. But um, so it's called Cure Your Fatigue. And I love how simple the explanation is at the bottom. You say how balancing three minerals and one protein is the solution that you're looking for when it comes to fatigue. So Morley, is it really, really that simple? Three minerals, one enzyme, one protein. Is it really that simple? Well, obviously I think it is. Mm. So you can see this print behind me. Yeah, right? I can. You can't really get the like detail. a triangle. It looks like ancient Egyptian there you images. Go. Yeah. The part that you can't, there's a sun at the top. Mm -hmm. Ra, right? Ra, Ra. Ra is at the top. And what's lining the the um, border are Ankh symbols, which is the Egyptian religious symbol. Mm -hmm. You know what the Ankh was made out of? No. It's not made out of gold was made out of brass. And what's brass made out of? Copper. And what's in the in the center are uh, different hieroglyphs about healing, and there's cats, and there's goddesses that are part of the healing process. But the reason why I have this behind me is I think that there's a hierarchy to the minerals. We, we know that there's, depending upon the author, between 82 and 92 minerals that are essential. Okay, I get that. And so... What we've got to do is just accept that um, there is a pecking order, that there is a hierarchy. And I think that copper and magnesium and iron are up here at the top. Right. So that makes that sense? Explains it. Yeah, that makes sense. But I have to say, Morley, your book is, you've used, you've used the term mind-blowing yourself in this conversation so far, and I've actually written it down in my notes because your book is, in a way, it's kind of mind-blowing because it blows away your um beliefs your current beliefs of what you know the, the relationship between iron and fatigue and it's it's a paradigm shift and it's a completely new concept to so many people and to myself it's it's a completely new concept and it's absolutely fascinating really and it's such a good topic because so many of us deal with energy issues to some extent we all have it because you need energy for everything you need energy not to only feel awake and feel alive but then also to heal and to move your muscles and to fight illness and you need energy for everything and everybody needs more energy and we all want that Absolutely. But what your book is basically saying is especially when it comes to um anemia and you know all of those conditions that are related to low iron you're basically saying that it's actually nothing to do with low iron but actually we, we have enough iron and in some cases we have too much it's more dysfunction than deficiency absolutely which is like that is mind-blowing because i've only ever known about low iron i've never really thought about deficiency i've always thought that um, we need more iron. I need to eat more iron. I need to take iron tablets. You know, I've had children. Mm -hmm. I've, you know, lost a lot of blood in my lifetime. So I've got friends who are anemic. I've got, you know, my my family, Absolutely. like people in my family. And so this is an absolutely um, completely different um, way of thinking about um, mm -hmm. energy. Totally. So I have to say, let, let's start with um, your story so I know you have a very interesting story your self-taught um, where you are today is completely off your own back yeah so 
I'm really curious, Morley, what led you to write this book and create the root cause protocol? Uh, well, I, I, as I noted, uh, I started out in a very sickly family. Mm. And my sister, my older sister, uh, who's no longer with us, she's in a much happier place, I think. Um, she became a nurse. And I was supposed to become the doctor. And I, that was my, the plan until I got to college and went, oh my God, this is not easy. <clears throat> Everybody wants easy, right? Where's, mm. where's the easy button? Come on. And there's nothing easy about getting into medical school. And I was not a student. I was not a um, thinker back then in my 20s. So I, I still applied to, to medical school. Uh, I only got rejected by 18, uh, 12 in one day. <laughs> that, that was quite, a, quite an experience. Um, so it, the writing was clearly on the wall that I wasn't headed for um, <clears throat> the hallowed halls of medicine. And I decided to go to business school. And if you can't be a doctor, you become a hospital administrator to boss them around. It's, it's a very simple solution. So I went that route. And I um, went to a business school and I worked in hospitals for 12 years. And then I wanted to become a consultant. And, and there's a lot of stress in consulting. The one that I had completely overlooked was holding a suitcase behind my back for 20 years, which caused me to develop what's called frozen shoulder. And I couldn't pick my hand up above my waist. It was really painful. Couldn't sleep. Went to see uh, friends in a, in a health food store. And they told me to go see Dr. Liz. And I went, I don't do witchcraft. Give me some supplements. And um, that didn't work. So I went back a couple months later. And by the grace of God, the, the owner of the store was there, and I was whining about my pain. She looked me in the eye, and she says, Morley, we love you. Go see Dr. Liz. Uh, long story short, Dr. Liz is now my wife, and <clears throat> life-changing experience, and she healed my shoulder. I, there's a, a muscle inside the uh, jaw called the pterygoid muscle, mm -hmm. little tiny muscle, but it regulates the shoulder. It's absolutely amazing. And she put the full weight of her body on that pterygoid muscle. And as she did, the pain was excruciating. But my arm came up. It was like a miracle. It's as close to a miracle as I ever want to get. And, um, and while we were chatting after that experience, she used a phrase that I'd never heard in 32 years of working in hospitals. She talked about an innate healer and i looked at her i didn't say anything i thought to myself if there's an innate healer why do we have millions of doctors around the world it didn't make sense to me and so the book is about the innate healer mm -hmm. and it's copper and all the copper enzymes that copper makes possible all the actions of copper that nobody knows about <clears throat> you have 4,700 signaling peptides in your body. Mm -hmm. Some of them are hormones, some of them are neurotransmitters, but there are these little cogs in the wheel and they need to be activated and they work just like our cell phone. When it's, when it's turned on, it's really cool, right? We can talk to people. Yeah. But, but those um, signaling peptides need to be turned on. And there's only one enzyme that does it. It's called the PAM enzyme. No one's ever heard of it. No doctor you've ever gone to has ever heard of it. And it's 35 letters long. Peptidoglycine alpha amidating monooxygenase. It's a big word, right? It's like, wow. Big word, yeah. Right. No wonder people don't use it. It's just That's the time. Right. I don't have enough time to say it. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so what people don't know is that the PAM enzyme has copper batteries running well, if the copper batteries aren't available because the diet isn't making them available then the signaling isn't right inside the body and the, the part of our brain that runs the body can't signal to the rest of the body, do this, do that. Mm -hmm. If you don't know about that, then all of this dysfunction appears real. The, the concept of disease seems realistic. 
But when you realize that it's all about energy and handoffs of electrons and making sure that things are, are in the right conformational structure, and there's this, there's an incredible blueprint that runs the human body. And the blueprint runs on key minerals, and we're back to the hierarchy, copper and magnesium, and, and what throws them off? Iron. Mm -hmm. So the, the greatest stress we have on planet Earth is called iron stress. Stress. Who would have thought? But it's the number one element on the planet. 36% of the Earth's composition is iron. What's it like to do? It likes to play with oxygen, right? They have a magnetic attraction for each other. And, and <clears throat> what is that iron oxide call? We call it rust. Mm -hmm. We know what a rusty nail, nail looks like, a rusty pipe, rusty car. But people didn't know that that rusting process was happening within. They forgot to tell us that, right? And the, the part that they absolutely did not tell us is that the reason why we're here, the reason why you and I are engaged in this captivating conversation on these very fancy devices is that higher ordered thinking requires more energy. So how do you do that? Well, you can you can ferment sugar and get two ATP or you can oxidize fat and make 140 ATP. And so our, our body over time learn to quote oxidize the fat. And what do you got to have to oxidize fat? You better have copper. <laughs> it's really important. I mean, and yeah, yeah. Nobody know nobody knows that. I've Tamara, I've read 10,000 articles in 15 years. One. One article. Well, it only takes one. One article pointed out the energy differential between fermenting sugar and oxidizing fat. And it's so explosive in its importance, mm -hmm. but people don't know that. And so what I've learned to do is put everything into an energy paradigm. And the phrase that I use is ignore the enemies, ignite the energy. So the enemies, the pathogens, the toxins, well, you know, there's all sorts of, of negative agents in our environment. Which we're so focused on. We're so yeah. focused on that, right? We've been trained like circus bears. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been to a circus? To a circus <laughs> I haven't been to one personally, oh, it's but I could, I've got a picture in my head right now. Yeah, yeah they're yeah. In, the, in the pink tutu. It's real. Yeah, the pink tutu. Yeah. Right. And that, unfortunately, is your doctor at the end of medical school. They've turned that brilliant mind into a peddling bear with a pink tutu. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I, I mean no disrespect to the practitioners out there, but their their diploma is made of Swiss cheese. There's glaring holes in what they don't know mm -hmm. about how the body works, and they don't know that because they think they've been taught the totality. What I would say is they've been taught a very narrow sliver of truth, and they think they've been taught the whole kit and caboodle. And so... But the energy is central to our being. And we need to make energy constantly to deal with the stress of life. Right. When does stress stop? The day they lower us into the ground, right? Mm -hmm. That's what there's no more stress, at least in this lifetime, right? Mm -hmm. And so we're always going to have stress. And everything changed in 2020. That was global stress, right? And what people might find entertaining is there was a book that we were required to read here in the States um, in high school, and it was entitled 1984. And it's about the totalitarian state. And the book was published in 1948. 1984, published in 48. When you subtract 48 from 84, what do you get? 36. When you add 36 to 1984, guess what you get? 2020. Mm -hmm. And that's that was the start of a totalitarian state that was outlined in George Orwell's book. Black became white, white became black, and citizens became enemies of the state. 
Now, <clears throat> it was a very traumatic time, but it was just a few months in, I realized what COVID stood for. COV, coppers vanished, ID, irons dysregulated, back to your observation. It's not, it's not a deficiency of iron, it's a dysregulation, it's a defunction of iron. And at that time, no one knew about that. They didn't know about the minerals. It's now coming to light in the research. More and more practitioners, more and more research scientists are realizing, oh my gosh, there's a there's a complete mismatch and it's affecting oxygen in the body. And the, the again, back to the importance of copper, is copper is the only element on planet Earth that can regulate oxygen and iron at the exact same time and cause no static. So and that's, yeah. that's that's our gift, is bioavailable copper. So if, if I'm understanding you correctly, so when iron and oxygen get together, they are, um, they cause um, oxidative stress. So they basically, they're, they're not good for us. And, um, you know, in the outside world, we see it as rust and um, that actually happens within us as well. But when copper is present, it regulates that relationship and it, it so, creates a safe um, uh, expression of the two. So when iron and um, oxygen get together, the copper kind of um, makes the combination safe and it creates safe energy without combustion. So without the kind of destructive um, oxidative stress that comes out of them when they react together. That's exactly right. Yeah. So think of it this way. There's, um, you've heard of the phrase opportunity cost. Yeah. You had yeah. a chance to do something, you didn't act right, and then you lost that opportunity. That yes. was the opportunity cost. Yeah. Oxygen is very, it's the second most reactive element on planet Earth. After fluorine gas, oxygen is number two, ozone is number three. People need to know that. And 21% of the air we breathe is a poison. It's called oxygen. Right. We can't live without it but we can't age without it either. And as soon as that, that uh, molecule of oxygen, which is O2, it's, so it's two oxygens that come together with a very unique bond, that becomes, a, it's a gas mm -hmm. in that state. And if it isn't managed properly, it'll take on an electron. And then it becomes what's called superoxide, I think it would be more accurate to call it hyperoxide, but they like to play with words and get us to think, oh, wow, that superoxide uh, must, be, must be really good. Yeah, that's okay. Right? But as soon as it becomes superoxide, you can't turn the oxygen into water. And, and the, way the, the way our mitochondria work, and we have about 40 quadrillion wow. mitochondria, so that's 15 zeros. It's a lot of mitochondria. That's a lot. Yeah. So on, on the cover of the book mm -hmm. is a gigantic mitochondria. Is there? I missed yeah. that. Yeah. Gotta have a look. Yeah. Oh yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So that's I've a, just the, seen it. Yeah. Just yeah. the white, the white outline. Absolutely. Yeah. And and the, yeah. the mitochondria are that's where it's at. And they're the ones that are taking the oxygen and turning it into two molecules of water to release energy. There, there's actually ADP that becomes ATP inside the mitochondria. Yeah. But if the O2 is becoming superoxide, and that's O2 with an extra electron, and it's, it's very reactive, and the body can't do anything with it, <clears throat> then that superoxide becomes what's called hydrogen peroxide. That's not water. H2O2, that's hydrogen peroxide, is very different than 2H2O. Mm -hmm. They're very close. H2O2, 2H2O, right? And, and if there was a biochemist present, like my, my younger son, Tom, who's a uh, PhD from Stanford in biochemistry, and it's his birthday today. It's oh, fabulous. Happy birthday yeah. to him. Big shout out to Tom. Yeah. But, if, but if he were present and I put him on the spot and said, how do you spell 
inflammation from a perspective of a biochemist, he'd say H2O2. Okay. And, okay. and, a, and a mitochondria producing H2O2 can't produce energy. Mm -hmm. It's very different. And, and that, is this the problem we're facing? Is this what we all are dealing with? Absolutely. Where we're losing our energy, we're not healing, we're getting sick. It's exactly. because our cells, they're not producing energy the way that it should. Exactly. And, and right. the blueprint is being violated mm. because the nutrients that we need, the, the bioavailable copper, the retinol, the natural B vitamins, and the magnesium, the other minerals, and so on, those fundamental nutrients are MIA because the food system is completely FUBAR. Mm -hmm. And people don't know that. You know, <clears throat> I grew up eating Pop-Tarts and um, Frosted nice. Flakes and orange juice. And it's like, I didn't know when I was little that I was poisoning my body. It was like, yeah. we all did, right? Yeah, we all did. So it's just, it, it, it's just helping people realize the... Um, the elegance of the body, mm -hmm. and and the the phrase that, that um, my colleague Christian Kershaw, she she's the one who really runs the program out of Australia. She came up with this phrase: the simplicity and the enormity of the root cause protocol. Mm -hmm. It's it's these very, these very simple principles, but they're immense in their importance. And then um, this past summer. Uh, my wife and I love to go to the movies. And there's a great movie about um, a baseball player named Yogi Bear. Some, some people may have heard of him. He was a famous Yankee. All I knew was he was a famous Yankee baseball player. I didn't, I didn't know anything about him. And fa fascinating figure in, in um, sports history. And it was his granddaughter who put together this beautiful uh, memorial to her grandfather. And he was famous for creating words and phrases uh, one of the, one of his famous ones was when you get to the fork in the road take it and what he was really referring to was his house was at at the center of a y it didn't matter which side of the fork he went you would get to his house so when yeah. you get to the fork in the road take it uh -huh. and, but but another word that he coined that i absolutely fell in love with is the word simplexity Mm, taking complex yeah. ideas and simplifying right and so and would you say that represents the root cause protocol absolutely right it's the simplexity absolutely it's, it's incredible because when i was reading your book i could see the benefits and the testimonials that some of your members mm -hmm. have had and the range of benefits is so broad you can't pinpoint how it helps your body it just helps your body how your body needs to be helped so i mean for yourself um your frozen shoulder but then you know people had their thyroid issues fixed and their cramps and they were sleeping better and it just shows that if you balance these minerals right. then you can solve pretty much most of your problems because most of your problems are down to energy issues but can, can i ask you though morley hmm. why do people not know about this? Why don't they know about the power of copper? I mean, there are studies from a hundred years ago, like you said in your book, right. and it's there, like it's there in black and white in print that copper is, you know, the mineral and that, you know, it's not about iron deficiency and, um, and, and it's, it's there, but why didn't we take it on board? Why do we still continue to focus on iron and not on copper when it comes to energy? So let's let's focus on a famous experiment that was done in Berlin in 1927. And it involved two of the brightest minds that ever graced the planet, Otto Warburg mm -hmm. and Hans Krebs. <clears throat> Very gifted um, clinicians and, and scientists who both earned a Nobel Prize, uh, 20 years apart, but it doesn't matter. Um, what they did in 1927, and what's really entertaining, there was a four-year period where Krebs worked for Warburg in Berlin. And when you go into the literature, it's very entertaining 
to see the arguments that they would have about whose idea the experiment was. How it's fascinating, just, two figures in history and just right. seeing their arguments, that's yeah. fascinating. It's, it's, it's yeah. like Mo Monty and Patton fighting over <laughs> who was more important, right? And so um, in this particular experiment, they used pigeons and geese, and they wanted to create a true state of anemia I would argue it may be the only time that anemia ever existed on this planet. Mm -hmm. But in this in this experiment, they bled these birds almost to the point of death. They wanted to, they wanted to get all the blood out and iron with it, and they wanted to to measure what is the bodily biological response to very little iron. And what shocked them, it must have been very disorienting for them, was there was a threefold increase in copper enzymes in the pigeons, in the blood, mm -hmm. and a sixfold increase in copper enzymes in the geese. And what that tells us is that copper is in charge. <clears throat> Traditional Chinese medicine, and before that, traditional Persian medicine. Persia was long before the Chinese. Most people don't know that. Uh, go back to Mesopotamia. It was some really smart people back then. <laughs> but what they knew, um, copper is the general, and iron is the foot soldier. We well, don't need to be in the, in, the, in the army to know that generals are more important than foot soldiers. Generals have more stars, right? What are the stars made out of? Brass. What's brass made out of? Copper, right? And so copper runs the show behind a curtain. You have to spell it right. And people don't know about that curtain. And what happened to that research where they were able to prove that copper responds to the iron crisis what's buried with the ark of the covenant in the indiana jones warehouse mm -hmm. nobody knows about it and i came across three articles that made reference to it so i thought i'd better read it and of course it was in german so i had to have it translated and it's it was absolutely mesmerizing research what they learned but it's not taught why, why? is it yeah why? Okay, why? Because it blows up the narrative. <laughs> it absolutely eviscerates. Think about what's what's one of the most powerful forces on planet Earth? Big Pharma. Mm -hmm. and, and what people need to understand is that big agriculture, big food, and big pharma are all connected. Mm -hmm. And they're run by the same people. Mm. People don't want to think about that. And, you don't have to go conspiratorial. You just stay within. Just stay within money. There's a lot of money to be made in altering agriculture, food processing, and pharmaceuticals. And the whole thing is a it's a paradigm of control, right? You know. And so I didn't know any of this. I be, I believe the. Oh, there's disease, and I grew up with disease, and so therefore it exists. And and it was about, um, it's probably about 2012, so it's about 12 years ago. I made a bold assertion on Facebook. I said, there is no medical disease. There is only stress-induced mineral dysregulation. Mineral dysregulation that causes metabolic dysfunction. Now, Tamara, when I made that statement, I fully expected to have this tsunami of practitioners saying, you don't know what you're talking about. How dare you insult us with our intellect? Blah, 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 blah. Nothing. Not one comment to challenge or refute my assertion. Wow. Not one. And so... You think that didn't embolden me to, to dig deeper and to prove that, in fact, that is the truth? And it's, this is not about ego. I just want the truth to come forward.
That's that's what this whole thing is about. I I made a commitment in my 30s, about, about the age of my son, Tom. I made a commitment to the truth, to integrity. Yeah. And I'm I'm not perfect. I've made glaring mistakes throughout my life. You know, but but we we make those mistakes so we can learn our lessons. Yeah. And I don't pretend to have it all figured out. I really don't. But I know that that there's a completely different paradigm of thinking that explains how our body really works, not how we're trained to believe it works. And to your earlier comments, um, root cause protocol, it's, it, it's again, it's not perfect, but it's a great foundation. It's a great place to start. But there's a secret sauce that needs to be a part of that, that process. And one of the most important ingredients is the individual's belief in their body's natural ability to heal itself. And if you believe that, amazing things will happen. I've had people feel completely different in 72 hours like that. That's incredible. I've had some people take nine months before they mm -hmm. start to feel it. And what's the difference? Their belief system. Wow. And so that, if someone believes that they can heal, you would say absolutely. that the process is a lot quicker. Yeah. Yeah. It, I, it, yeah. it absolutely is. And it's not it's not to put it in this realm of, you know, airy fairy, oh gosh. You know, it, no, it, there's there's energy behind that knowingness. Mm -hmm. And one of my graduates is a, a physician in Texas. And she asked her, her patients now one simple question. If we're able to identify, if we know every element that's needed in order to improve your health, do you believe your body has the natural ability to take advantage of that? It's a great question, really powerful question. And she finds that 99 out of 100 of her patients absolutely say yes. Yeah. And it's the 1% that struggle with it, and they're the ones that are the challenge in her practice because they, they just can't believe that their body has this innate ability and it does and we just need to nurture it and we need to deal with our fears we need to deal with our iron and those are important components that are that are explained uh, in the book but the the whole dynamic is around energy mm -hmm. and when and when we're vibrating at the right frequency you and i are vibrating Everyone listening to this is vibrating. We don't really see it, but inside there's this, this constant little pulse of, the, of energy, right? And if it's not, if the frequency isn't right, then the health status isn't right. Mm -hmm. And it affects all the way down to the electron flow inside the mitochondria. And that's really where, that's the origin of the, of the dysregulation that takes place. I mean, this is so intriguing and it just makes me want to dive into, okay, how do we do this? How does this work? Mm -hmm. um, so before we get into that, what I want to ask you about is anemia, because yeah, sure. we um, obviously it's something that we are taught to believe is very common, that we don't have enough iron, which yeah. I found was really interesting in your book when you said, how can we be low in iron when planet Earth is abundant in iron? And it's like yeah. it's, it's almost unavoidable. So I, I found that really interesting correlation. Um, but we're told that we don't have enough iron. So um, especially women, um, we're told, you know, because of our menstrual cycles and after we yeah. have children and um, me, myself, I've been um, thinking I have anemia, um, that I have low iron, um, that I need to eat iron rich foods, I might need to get supplements at some point. Um, you know, my friend has had an iron infusion and, um, you know, sure. it, it's, it's everywhere. It's absolutely everywhere. So is anemia a real thing how much time do we have <laughs> <clears throat> so is um, it a real thing like what is going on is it a thing is low let, iron let, a thing okay let's let's draw a distinction between anemia of iron deficiency versus anemia of chronic disease they're very different those are the, the scientists, the clinicians recognize those are the two most prevalent forms of anemia on the planet. And what we're further 
trained to believe is that the anemia of iron deficiency is, is this big and anemia of chronic disease is this big. Mm -hmm. It's just the opposite. And so, um, again, we're back to iron's the most prevalent element on the planet. So what it means is for you to believe that you are <clears throat> iron deficient, it means that um, the most evolved species on the planet, that would be humans, has lost the natural ability to metabolize the number one element on the planet. It doesn't make any sense. Mm. The most evolved species can't handle the most significant element on the planet. When I figured that out, I went, wait a minute, There's, something's wrong. And um, the term anemia of chronic disease was coined in 1942 by Max Weintraub and um, George Cartwright. And they were MD, PhDs at the University of Utah. And Max Weintraub um, actually wrote a first textbook on hematology by himself, a big, enormous textbook. He was at Hopkins at the time, and then he relocated to, to Utah. And he was a, an absolute genius. But he was all about copper. He knew how important copper was. Now, the part that most people don't know about is that every second of every day, every second, we need to get rid of two and a half million red blood cells that are dying. And we need to replace them with two and a half million. And the two and a half million that are coming offline are being taken care of by our spleen for the most part. And the two and a half million that are coming online are coming from our bone marrow, from our lung bones femur, our uh, pelvic region, our hips. They are richly composed of bone marrow, which is fat, basically. Guess where 47% of the copper in the human body is found? It's in our bone marrow. 47%. 27% in our muscles. 25% in our organs. 1% is in our blood. That's the copper side of the house. The iron side, 70% of the iron in our body is in hemoglobin. And there's a lot of hemoglobin inside one red blood cell. Mm -hmm. And we're turning over two and a half million every second. So <clears throat> we've been talking now for 60 minutes times 60, times two and a half million, our body's been very busy making new red blood cells. And nobody knows about this. And no one's thinking about this turnover. And so in the course of 24 hours, Tamara, we need to make 200 billion red blood cells every 24 hours. But what's going to surprise you is that it takes only 25 milligrams of iron to make 200 million red blood cells, 25 milligrams of iron, that's nothing. The average adult has 5,000 milligrams of iron. 25 is just this little tiny sliver of iron. Now here's the part that will shock you and your listeners. 24 of those 25 milligrams of iron come from a recycling system that's run by the general copper. And iron has got to be constantly recycled all day long, all night long. And what happens is there's a critical doorway. It's an iron doorway, and its technical name is ferroportin, iron doorway, ferroportin. And it's run, it, it, it's operated by a copper doorman. There's a copper enzyme that opens that door to let the iron out so it can get back down to the bone marrow where the um, nurse cells, they're literally called nurse cells. There's about 35 little uh, red blood cells at different stages of development on one nurse cell. Go back to when you had kids and you were, were um, breastfeeding them. That's exactly what the nurse cell is doing. 
-hmm. is this nurturing these budding little think about the speed of it though it's like like ah we're oh, back to yeah we're, we're, the numbers are so big we can't comprehend them <laughs> but the thing is there's this elegant simplexity um, of rebuilding red blood cells that allow us to exist on the planet. Well, nobody knows about that. And if you don't know about that, then the, the term anemia makes sense. But if you do know about it, then you really understand what George Cartwright and Max Weintraub were talking about. It's a lack of copper that's causing iron to get stuck in the tissue. Mm -hmm. It can't get out. And it, it, the iron shows low on the blood test. Mm -hmm. And there's very important research that was done in 2004 by mm -hmm. a very famous scientist named Bruce Ames. He was at the peak of his career. He was at Berkeley for about 35 years. Mm -hmm. At the peak of his career, he was the most quoted scientist on planet Earth. We're not talking about Billy Bob. Thornton, we're talking about Bruce Ames, this demigod of research, of physiology research, and he and his partner, uh, David Caloria, figured out that there's 10 times more iron in the tissue than shows up in the blood. And so it's all smoke and mirrors about anemia because the blood test does not test for iron in the tissue. Right. The only way you get to iron in the tissue, there's two ways to do it. You can do a needle biopsy of your liver, very painful, you first, or you can do a Tesla II MRI, very expensive, again, you first, but they will reveal the tissue level of iron to help you understand why the blood level might be low. And that's where all the confusion is, is this misunderstanding about where it's like where's waldo right yeah yeah where's iron where's iron it's it's up here but there's no way to measure it in a blood test absolutely impossible and so low iron in a blood test is masking high iron in the tissue now let's deal with the copper side everyone goes hyperbolic about high copper in the blood well, we just learned a minute ago that only 1% of copper is in the blood. 47% is, wow, it's in the bone marrow. 25%, 27%. And so 99% of the copper is in, in the tissue. 1% is in it. So when that 1%, when the 1% is high in the copper, guess what it's revealing? It's missing in the tissue. And if it's missing in the tissue, then that's why the iron is building because it, the doorman cannot open up the, the pathway to let the iron out to complete the recycling system. Does that make sense? It does. So are you saying that the copper, if your copper is high um, in your blood, that means right. that the um, that means that it's not doing its job in the tissues with the iron. Right. It's not dealing with the iron correctly. So That's really, exactly. high copper is a, an important thing to look out for. So really, having your copper tested is a really in, important part of the puzzle. It's essential, and it yeah. isn't just copper. You got to measure the protein ceruloplasmin. Mm, That's right. That means blue plasma. Mm. It's a blue protein in our, so so. what is plasma? Well, that's the seawater that the red blood cells swim in, yeah. right? So when you, do, when you take a vial of blood, it's red, right? Mm -hmm. Right? When you spin it down in a centrifuge, yeah. it becomes two liquids. You've got what are called packed red blood cells. It's very red at the bottom, mm -hmm. and it's kind of white, milky white at the top. That's mm -hmm. plasma. Mm -hmm. and that's where all the minerals are. That's where all yes. the proteins are. That's where all the, the vital, like the vitality uh, of that seawater, because mm -hmm. it's got all the minerals. Like it, it's supposed to have the exact same mineral content in plasma that the sea has. Mm -hmm. You think the average human has that today? No way. Absolutely not. And so the, the copper protein, ceruloplasma, is a critical piece of the puzzle. And so what's really important is to know both the copper level in the plasma and the ceruloplasma. And the ratio is what 
is where the magic is. Ideally, we're supposed to have 100 units of copper mm -hmm. and 30 units of ceruloplasma. And the ratio mm. is 3.33. Mm. Is that not, easy not, to not ask ratio. for? Is that easy to ask for? If So if someone was to say, okay, I really want to know what's going on with my blood. I want to know um, what I need to do next. So is it easy to ask the doctor, can I get my copper tested? Can I get ceruloplasma tested? Is, I mean, how how is someone supposed to speak to their doctor about this? It's very easy to ask for it. Should they, should they, and should they also ask for their iron to be tested? I mean, it seems uh, like. So know. what, so, so what I developed here in the States, and it's actually available uh, in parts of Europe and Australia and other places. I, I don't know about your neck of the woods, but um, what it's called the full Monty iron panel. I like that. And it measures. We all need to get that done. Right. Yeah. And it measures 13 different components. And when I send you the article about um, beer, mm -hmm. I'll send you the link for the, the blood test. And you can just see what the components are. Your followers can go to their doctor, but they've got to prepare themselves for resistance mm -hmm. or confusion. And, and the reason why doctors are not trying to withhold information from you, they've never ordered some of these blood tests before. Mm -hmm. And where their where their anxiety rises is they don't know how to interpret the results. Mm. Yeah, that's right. Like they wouldn't right. know how to explain it to you. You would be looking at a bunch of numbers and you wouldn't know what to do with it. What so the, the time frame that I use with folks is I can I can teach the average person in the public. It takes me five minutes, five minutes to explain how easy it is to to bring the body back. Mm. Here, here are the components involved. So a hierarchy, blah, blah, blah. It takes me five months to explain it to a doctor because we've got to tease apart their puzzle box of knowledge that conflicts with the truth. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm not being critical of doctors. They know what they know. They don't know what they don't know. And so the question is, is it easy to ask for? It is very easy to ask for. It may not be easy to get it. Because the doctor is going to get nervous that, well, this person must know something I don't know. Mm -hmm. And that's very threatening to anyone when you're interacting with a professional like that. So, But I think it's very important that people know, what is my copper status? What is my iron status? What is my zinc, my vitamin A, my vitamin D, my uric acid? I'm really, you, you probably drive a car, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, right. And you're not thinking about your car makes energy so you can go forward, but it's making exhaust, but you don't see it. Mm. You don't even think about it. When the exhaust becomes billowing black smoke, you pay attention to it, right? Mm -hmm. Well, uric acid is billowing black smoke it, and it shows up in a blood test. And if, it, if your uric acid starts to rise, it means your mitochondria are not happy they're not able to make energy. They're not able to make ATP efficiently. And so they're having to cannibalize the mitochondria to find phosphate groups. And that's what energy really is. It's phosphate being cleaved off. And there's a spark every time the phosphate is given off. And so the, the mitochondria are breaking down the house, breaking down the, the peptides and nucleotides to get access to the phosphate. And then it shows up as rising uric acid. And and please don't misunderstand that, well, I don't worry about uric acid until I have gout in my big toe. It's a really big problem. Gout, if let's let's picture um picture uric acid as Mount Everest. Gout is the top foot of Mount Everest. So it's been building over time. Yeah. Right. Building over time. Yeah. It's just a, it's an important way to to rethink the body's messaging to the individual. The body is incredibly intelligent, and it runs on this hierarchy, and it produces metabolites that are very revealing. Another would be uh, rising blood sugars. Mm -hmm. What that tells you is you're not you're not burning the fuel properly. It's good to know that. And, and that gets into a whole nother chapter of the copper iron dynamic. But it's but I think for your listeners, 
uh, they need to understand that the body is incredibly endowed with intelligence, that there is a blueprint. The blueprint runs on critical minerals and, and uh, nutrients. And all we did within the root cause protocol was dust off Mother Nature and say, hey, this, this appears to be really important. And, and it helps a lot of people regain their metabolic balance. That's really what it's all about. So just say someone is struggling with symptoms of anemia or they're yeah, feeling sure. fatigued. So taking iron tablets and um, eating iron-rich foods, I'm gathering that that is not what needs to happen because you actually have too much iron stored in your tissues. There's an iron deficiency, there's an iron dysfunction, not an iron deficiency that we're dealing with. Right. So in your book, the second part of your book, you discuss what people should start doing and what they should stop doing. Yeah. So let's start with um, what people should stop doing. So just say they, they have symptoms of fatigue and they're like, right, I want to deal with this now. So just say they want to get the full Monty blood test. Um, what else does someone need to um, do from now? Like what do you, what do you, um, what do you advise to someone? Yeah. Well, People need to, to get beyond the narrative. And so the narrative would tell us you need calcium, you need iron, you need ascorbic acid, you need zinc, you need vitamin D. There's a dozen uh, components that we tell people to stop taking. Mm. And it's very heretical. They're they're like, very, uh, yeah, the very common supplements like vitamin D, like that, you're just like, don't do the vitamin D thing. Don't do the zinc thing. And they're all supplements that are really common. Very common. Very common. And when, when people, and a lot of people feel better when they stop doing those narrative driven uh, intakes. You, you, you have no idea how many people take um, not, not just vitamin D, but calcium and mm -hmm. iron mm -hmm. and, and synthetic B vitamins. And they don't know that, that there's a price to pay for that. And so just completing the stops is a really big deal. And then we have starts that are in phases. And the whole idea is just to introduce people to this powerhouse of nutrients that runs the blueprint. And we do it in phases just so people can ease into it. And the ultimate objective, the whole purpose behind the, the root cause protocol is to cure your fatigue. Mm -hmm. Introduce more, not just copper, bioavailable copper. So what does that mean? Yeah. It turns out that there are two very important copper pumps and they have the initials ATP7A and ATP7B. Well, those two pumps need to be activated by retinol. Most of your listeners are eating a low-fat diet because they've been trained to be afraid of fat. Well, retinol is a fat-soluble vitamin. And, and it likes to hang out with something called cholesterol. Most people have been trained to be afraid of cholesterol. And, and that's all narrative-driven. Our ancestors, you know, according to the research of Weston A. Price, who you may be familiar with, yes. you know, 60 to 70% of their calories were from fat. Mm butter, animal fat, animal Absolutely. produce, yeah. Absolutely, and, and the organs that, that they contain, a lot of that are retinol. And so, again, we were trained starting in 55 when President Eisenhower had his first of eight heart attacks. Stop eating cholesterol. And what we didn't know was that they were trying to get retinol out of our diet. So when I'm sitting in Starbucks doing my research and I listen to people boom, 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 ordering skinny latte, skinny latte, skinny latte. That's a low-fat drink, low-fat drink, low-fat drink, because I'm afraid of fat. I'll give you I'll give you $100 for every container of full-fat yogurt you can find in your supermarket. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's not um, as common as the half-fat, like, skimmed, <laughs> yeah. And the, and, the, and the aisle that has butter in it, it's really spread. 99% of what's considered butter is actually margarine or some form of vegetable fat. It's not butter. Well, butter is very different. And so what we're, what we're really seeking to do is get more retinol 
into the diet to run these pumps. One, one pump, 7B, is what makes ceruloplasmin. Really, I'd say it's one of the most important proteins on the planet. And 7A makes all the rest. When we were, when we were talking about the PAM enzyme, mm -hmm. well, 7A makes sure that the PAM enzyme gets loaded with copper. I was talking about DBM, dopamine beta monoxide. 7A makes sure that DBM gets copper in tyrosinase, and so on. Down the line, there's a whole network of copper enzymes that no one's ever heard of because copper is the Achilles heel of human physiology. So if you don't know about it, it's just a little tiny thing. Uh, we, so we have 5,000 milligrams of iron in our body. We have 100 milligrams of copper. Again, we're back to generals versus grunts. Not as many generals in the army. And so when when we are missing, let's say we're missing 30% of our copper. We go from 100 milligrams down to 70. That's a 30% loss. Well, let's think about what a fever is. Normal body temperature, at least here in the States, is 98.6. When it goes up 4%, 4%, it's called a fever. It goes up to 102. That's a 4% differential. And we know how bad we feel with a fever. That's a 4% differential. And there's a, a famed copper researcher uh, named Maria C. Linder. She passed away in uh, 20, 2022. Um, she indicated in a study, in an article she wrote just about six months before her death, that she thinks that humanity is now working with 70 milligrams of copper, not 100. And that's a big deal because mm -hmm. it's a 30% difference. So that's almost eight times the differential of a fever. And the body knows that at a metabolic level. Now, the part that you may not know about, how many how many children do you have? Two. 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 Okay. Yeah. So the bookends of stress on planet Earth are guys in foxholes worrying about death and moms in birthing suites worrying about life. Very stressful events. Mm -hmm. And pregnancy is stressful from stem to stern. Uh, world-renowned magnesium expert, um, Mildred Seeley. She was a physician here in the States. Um, her famous quote is, pregnancy is a magnesium deficient state from stem to stern. Magnesium deficiency from stem to stern. And then there's a very famous uh, physiologist, um, um, my mind just went blank. Um, so Joseph Barcroft. Yeah. He was in England. He was studying alpine physiology. But in his later years, he was studying pregnancy. Because the hypoxia of being at the top of Mount Everest is identical to the hypoxia of a fetus inside the mother's womb. Mm -hmm. There's very little oxygen inside the womb in the first trimester. And there's only 8% before the baby is born. So it goes from 1% all the way up to 8%. But his famous, famous saying is, pregnancy is Mount Everest in utero. And it's a very powerful statement. And what most people don't know, especially women who are pregnant, is that in the third trimester of the pregnancy, they're getting the baby ready to become a aerobic mammal. Mm -hmm. So the, the fetus actually starts out as a parasite. That's a fact. What do what parasites live in? Hypoxia. Mm -hmm. They don't want oxygen. And, and then <clears throat> in the last trimester, there's an enormous download of copper from mother to the baby. So your, your liver going through the placenta is downloading copper into the baby's liver. So you and I as adults have livers that have about seven milligrams of copper. It's not very much. It's a little tiny bit of copper. But when we were born, assuming we were born to healthy moms, 
Mine is questionable, but maybe yours is better. But so me, it was everything went according to plan. We were born with livers that had 70 milligrams of copper. Wow. And the energy deficit that, that mothers have after they deliver, the depression that they have, the dysregulation that they experience is because most women today don't have enough copper for the first baby. And then they have two, three, four, and they're just, their copper reserves are kind of depleted, exactly yeah. depleted. And mm -hmm. then what happens? Copper's down and there's a biological response in the body. Iron accumulates in the tissue, mm -hmm. but you don't know about that research. From 1928, March at the University of Wisconsin, May at the University of Kentucky. Famed research that explains that there is this axis. Copper's low, iron's high, gets stuck in the tissue. They've known about this for almost 100 years, Tom. It's just not being taught. Right. And so the anemia is a head fake because they, they want you to believe it's anemia of iron deficiency when, in fact, it's more likely anemia of chronic deficiency. And when does anemia of iron deficiency really take place? If you've been in a car accident and you're bleeding out. Right. Or you're a pigeon or a goose yeah. in a famous lab in, in Berlin. But the average person, no. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a deceptive term that creates the illusion of iron deficiency when, in fact, it's copper that's missing, the general is missing, the iron recycling system is not working properly, and therefore it appears like iron is low, when in fact iron is building in the tissue, it's stuck, and what does it need to release that iron? You gotta have copper to open up the doorway. So we need to increase copper rich foods. Yeah. And um, when it comes to um, supplementation, which supplements do you recommend? Well, it's it's all laid out in the in yeah, the and it's it really gets to minerals are very important. Mm -hmm. um, natural B vitamins that you find in like beef liver, uh, natural sources of vitamin A like you find in beef liver or cod liver oil are two very very rich sources, or even um, free range eggs that have a lot of retinol in them, and butter, grass fed butter. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some very rich sources of, of these nutrients. And what I also recommend now, I encourage people, I, when, when, I, when the world started to change in 2020, and I realized what the, what the conflict was on a mineral level, that's when I uh, teamed up with a company uh, called Formula IQ, and I developed what's called Recuperate. And it's a supplemental form of copper based on beef liver and spirulina and some turmeric, but there's two milligrams of copper bisglycinate. And again, the name of it is just a signal to my unending wit, recuperate and get people to realize that that even with a even with a nutrient dense diet, even with an organic diet, we don't realize how compromised the minerals are in our soil. Mm -hmm. And so the whole purpose behind recuperating is give people a fighting chance to yeah. restore the, the blueprint in their body, to restore energy, to restore homeostasis. And that's really what it's all about. Well, really, it's the, you know, people say, just take a multivitamin just to, you know, cover your bases because we don't have enough nutrients in our diets. But really... Um, recuperate which you created that's the real in quotes multivitamin as in right. it's the one that really covers your bases so if you have a healthy diet and you're getting um you know as, as many variation of minerals from good sources as you can but then it's just there to support you recuperate right. because you know the, the state of our soils and you know even if you're eating a varied diet the nutrients probably aren't where they should be so mm -hmm you're basically filling in those gaps absolutely and, and again i i i um i want to be careful I, for, for many many years i i didn't want to get into the supplement business I really, and i don't mm -hmm. as a rule i don't want people to think oh he's just a supplement whore now yeah i'm just trying to help people regain their mojo 
Mm -hmm. And I'm very proud of the of the product. And, and Mike Casey at Formula IQ is the genius behind it. And he deserves the, the acclaim that he will, he will receive in his lifetime. Um, but it's just people need to realize that the, the environment is more compromised than we realize. Mm -hmm. And the narrative is absolutely demonic. There's no other word for it. And I don't want to make people uncomfortable. But when I was growing up, I grew up in a in a Christian household, Episcopal household. And I didn't believe the Bible. I, I didn't believe there was evil. I I read the Bible. It's a pretty, pretty wild story if you've ever taken the time to read it. But I, when did I start to believe in evil? About 15 years ago when I started doing this research. Wow. It's undeniable. Mm -hmm. The alignment of the insanity is it's like, and my roommate from college, great guy, he said, Morley, don't 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 go to conspiracy. Just tell people that, that people make more money when we're when we're not well. And I said, okay, Dave, that's that's fair. And let's just leave it there. We don't need to get into this like into the uber, powers that be and no, yeah, uber frightening sense of of uh, elite blah 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 blah. But just know that. There are some very amazing synchronistic events happening. And all we're trying to do, again, we're, we're aware of the TV show out there, the video game. Mm -hmm. And we're just trying to make it so that people can deal with their stress so they can learn their lessons. That's mm -hmm. really, and, and, and be of available and of service to their fellow man. That's really what it's, that's all it is. What's it all about, Alfie? Well, that's it, right? You know, right there. I mean, this is the perfect time to just ask you, where are you going next? What's next for you? Um, great question. <laughs> uh, I I got a call from a, a film producers who did the movie The Secret. Yes. And, uh, Don and Melinda Boyer. And um, they've done uh, 18 other films since The Secret. And the one that they are focusing on now is called beyond physical matter. And a couple of the people from The Secret are in it. Um, um, Joe, Joe Vitale is one of them. Um, oh, I love him. Yeah, I, did, I was I was just honored to be, you know. Yes, the same. The same. <laughs> like, so I'm, so I'm, one of the, I'm one of the dozen people profiled in this movie. And the, the premiere was just um, about 10 days ago in, in Los Angeles. That That's a, a trip in and of itself. But... Um, what's it what's next my goal I, I don't care about being in the movie it's it's an honor i'm i'm really it's it's really it's really like that's me <laughs> and then moment's over <laughs> that's yeah, me the 15, the 15 seconds of, you know, yeah. have, have flown by i want to i want to have a conversation a really meaningful conversation with someone like uh, a, a joe rogan or a mm. um um a Gwyneth Paltrow or someone yeah. who who's on an international level yeah um and just explain what you and I are talking about in a relaxed setting that there's more to the story yeah and what's next is I I I believe there's enough people on the planet who are looking for the answer looking for the next dimension of truth and if I can help facilitate that message, that would be my honor. And and it isn't about me. It isn't about my ego. It's about the truth. Yeah. Coming forward to help people deal with their reality. Like, I, I would love to have a conversation with Tucker Carlson. Would that be a hoot? I mean, wow. Just to, because these are people who are, the, the people I've identified are people who are really willing to get under the covers and get into the, the weeds of what's really going on. Nobody understands minerals. Mm. Nobody knows. Yeah, that the, nobody talks about it much, do they? No, no, no. And, and no one realizes how powerful these minerals are. And, and what, are, what are the minerals really doing? Mm -hmm. Minerals are running the microbes that are running the planet. Mm. And, and my, my colleague, Martha Carlin, uh, who's just absolutely brilliant about the microbes. She is the, is to the um, micro, microbiome what I am to the mitochondria. And um, 
it's just so important to realize that the, the world as we know it runs on the back and the machinery of microbes but they've got to have minerals to do it yes. and so it's a it's a uh, a fascinating journey to go into the uh, the real uh, mechanisms of how physiology works mm -hmm. how our energy paradigm works how our vitality uh, is sustained and it's just fun for people to realize that that there really is an answer that there really is an explanation because you want to have fun with your doctor mm -hmm. just really seriously go yeah. have fun ask them how energy is made in the body second question ask them how blood is made in the body mm -hmm. third question ask them how the hormones communicate with each other because they're all signaling peptides and they got to have they got to be turned on. They're not turned on, they don't work. And so it's real important to know those are three very simple concepts that run the show mm -hmm. on every level of life on the planet. You got to make energy. You know, if you're if you're of, of animal origin, you've got to make blood. Because what's blood doing? It's carrying oxygen, yeah. carrying carbon dioxide. And it, it's a waiter. Yes, yeah, so I was going to say, wait, uh, you resembled one just then. <laughs> but, here, but here's the part that everyone misses, Tim. When, when you're looking at conventional medicine, all the spotlights are in the kitchen. Because the, what's the kitchen? That's the, that's the mitochondria. The mitochondria on the outside of the book is, is the kitchen of our cells. Okay? And what does every kitchen have? A stove. Mm -hmm. And what is every stove made out of? Iron steel right here's the catch does the stove know what's for dinner does the stove know what temperature to turn the oven on does the stove know which pot to put up on the range so it can be you know, right to cook mm -hmm. the vegetables or whatever you're going to do every kitchen has what chef. A, queen, a chef <laughs> right but i also call them cuisine artists spell it right cu hyphen so you see the copper and and it turns out inside that mitochondria inside that my the, the mitochondrial kitchen there's a complex it's complex four its formal name cytochrome c oxidase Ooh, that sounds really scary right cytochrome just means it's got color oxidase means it works with oxygen Who's running that complex? Well, there's two heme molecules, heme A and heme A3, made of iron. Thank you very much. And what are they? It's a stove that holds oxygen. And then the cuisine artist, copper, slices and dices the O2, turns it into two molecules of water, 2H2O, that release, releases three molecules of ADP, goes over to complex five that's spinning at 500 revolutions per second. I'd be impressed if you could do a pirouette, one pirouette in a second. Maybe you could do two, right? 500, 500 revolutions per second. And what's it doing? It's turning ADP into ATP and Who's the battery pack in that system? Copper. And nobody knows that. You can't, you cannot turn ADP into ATP. AD as in David into AT as in Tom, unless you have copper. And so it's like, imagine, let's trade places for a second. Imagine you know what I know. How do you think it, what, what do you think the day is like having to deal day in and day out with people worrying about disease, people worrying about their broken body, people worrying about what their doctor just told them. When in fact, we were endowed by our maker and mother nature to be sovereign beings, mm -hmm. have this natural ability to make energy, to stay in balance, to keep all of the insanity at bay through energetic frequency, and that's that's my stress is to know what I know, and I get I'm blessed to have conversations like this with people like you. It's I really appreciate the opportunity, but it's like I would I would love 
to have everyone know what I know yeah. and not, not be in a situation where I'm trying to always move the, the boulder up the hill. Yeah. Get people to have that, that momentary enlightenment only to be spooked by something else and then the, the boulder runs back down the hill and they're afraid of some disease. Yeah, and that's why, you know, reaching the masses really makes sense for you, you know, to go like to talking to people who are on an international level so you can really just get your point across to as many people as possible because that's what you're all about. You're just about the truth. And yeah. just if you can just spread that as far as you can, that's the goal for you. It's, it's the hundredth monkey syndrome. It's, you know, it's uh, uh, Malcolm Gladwell wrote a book years ago called the tipping point. Mm, I've got that on my shelf. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's a great, great book. But what he talks about is a very small percentage of society are connectors. Mm. And when that small percentage of society gets it, yes. everyone gets it. Consciousness shifts. And, and all I'm trying to do is find the hundredth monkey. Yeah. So, so that everyone's washing their potatoes and their whatever. They, they all know it's important to wash their food before they eat it. That's what that's what happened on that map on the island. Boom. And it was all monkeys on all the islands that suddenly knew they had to wash their food. Well, that's all I want to do is get it to a point where everyone realizes, wow, the body is really elegant. It's kind of complicated, but it's very simple too. Mm. Back to simplexity. And this this explains so much about you as well, because when I was researching you, I just saw you everywhere. You've done so many podcasts. You've been you said you've been on about two hundred shows. You've had about two hundred conversations and climbing. Like I'm sure you're accepting, you know, even after this one, you've got more. And right. it's really what you just said. You're just trying to find that tipping point. You're trying to find that one kind of opportunity or maybe it's a few that rolled into one where it, it, it tips over and everyone suddenly is a household um piece of knowledge yeah, yeah. I mean, I've had, that's very I mean, touching Morley I love that I love that no, about just, you. That's again, so nice. just, I'm, I'm yeah. just trying to do my part and I had one client say uh, Morley you, do, you don't know the impact you're having I said well yeah. maybe I don't and she she lives on a cul-de-sac mm -hmm. and there's there's 10 families on the cul-de-sac she said Everyone on the cold side is doing RCP. Mm -hmm. So you, you saved a marriage. They were headed for divorce court. And then when they got their energy back, they realized they were still in love. So I said, she, she said, you don't know the ripple effect. And I, and I don't. I mean, I get... I get you know what? I, I have to say, though, like, I mean, you already feel like you're somebody who's already getting your message out there. Like, it's already grown. Like, it's growing. I mean, you're already, you know, your point is being, your book is being sold like everywhere. And, you know, so many people are talking about you now and you're on all of these podcasts. And um, I feel like it's, it's kind of happening already. Maybe you're not seeing it right. as, for what it is. Again, yeah. that, broken, that broken patience, Jean. Right. No, it's just, again, it's like, yeah. I'm not getting any younger, right? <laughs> Sands of time are working their magic. And that's fine. I, mm -hmm. I, I'm i blessed with energy. I'm blessed with recall. I'm blessed with able to connect dots and love to start every day uh, digging in the research. And it's just, it's something that's what drives me. Mm -hmm. I I really, um, I look forward to the time when I can say, okay, we turn the corner. And I and I did my part. I, it's not, I'm not, again, I'm not looking for the recognition. I just want to say, I moved the baton to the point where it became a, a much more, prevalent understanding yeah. and, and then there's a lot of good that will come from that and i'm just doing my part to yes. move the baton and and conversations like this are really important because every conversation counts mm -hmm. so i really I, I appreciate the chance to have this exchange me too uh, morley you're just you're so fabulous and i was really looking forward to this conversation and um it's for this reason it's because i knew already that you're just such a warm kind-hearted person and you're just wanting to do the right thing and um, right. you're doing a great job of it so i just mm -hmm. want to say a huge thank you for coming on to this podcast and i want to wish you all the best in your journey because it's an exciting one for sure so thank you so much there's there's no boredom i can assure you <laughs>